Welcome to this instruction video of Diamond. In this video, I will show you how you can work with the graphics. The graphics you can find under the tab View, and they are here in the ribbon analysis. The moment that you select a number in the grid, highlight it, this icon here, and then you can work with the graphics. So let's press that icon now, and immediately a screen pops up. You see that the screen also has different icons. First, I want to go with you over the icon, but before I do that, I just enlarge that screen here. The left icon here is the icon where you can select your chart style. So when I click on it, I see line charts, area charts, bar charts, pie chart, sensitivity chart, and season trend style chart. How they work, I will show you later in this video. Besides that, you can copy this graphic, you can save this graphic as an icon separately outside your file, you can, can make a print of it. This is all about the presentation, yes or no grid, 3D style, transparent style. So here we can select the header, here we navigate what kind of data we want to present in the graphic, and here is a timetable to select over what years or periods I want to present my graphics itself. And on the right side here, I have my profile. And why it's there? That's because I can create more graphics, save them, and use them all over again just by selecting. So for now, I had, for example, the working capital. Let's select that one. And I get this graphic instantly on my screen. Now we go back to the original one, to the default, and I got that other graphic back here. So under the profile, I have a Dropbox with the different graphics which I've created. And can select every time again. So let's go over the icons now, how they really work. The first thing I want to show you is the calendar. In the calendar, I select a period. So for example, I have here made a forecast in my graphic from 2019 to 24, but it's only 2022. So that means I want to see how far I, in my progress, in my sales, I expected it. So I deselect here and go back here to 2022 and save it. And you see here that in this graphic, this is the line of my forecast, the light blue one, and the dark blue one is given the line of my real financial figures. And this graphic shows me that my sales is doing better than expected. Just as simple as it is. Now I select back this period of time, 2022, because I want to show you more functionalities with the full line here. The other one is the navigator. The navigator is here. On the desk icon, when I press it, the total tree of all lines which are in my system are there. That means that from every line of data I have, I can select them and place them here. For example, financial fixed assets. When I select it here, I press this button, it's there. Yes, and I can also then select if I want to have that y x1 or i want to have the y x2 on the screen or i want to have a pie or i want to have the figures positively or negatively so here i can really select in what order i want to present my data also that one i will show you later on in the video how that really works it's not difficult at all and then once i have made this line i can save the profile so i want to have just the line of net sales not the financial fixed assets so i deselect the one again by just Press the other arrow back, and I save my profile here, and I call it net sales. And I can choose that I store this profile also in other documents. That means that the graphics are not only shown in the profile you're working on, but also in other files. I select that, of course, because I want that, and I save it. And from that moment, I press OK. And I have now the default, the working capital, and the net sales graphics in my Dropbox, as I showed you earlier. So now, we have the timetable. We selected what kind of data we want to present in our screen. And now I have the presentation itself. So what do these icons do? Now, this one shows you the effect in 3D. When I press it, it's activated, and the lines are more three-dimensional and then I can make them transparent as well 
or not transparent and not three-dimensional. This one is for the grid. You can select grid or I can deselect grid. Just what you want to see there. Then I can print it. I can save it on my computer with a different name or I just can copy the graph with and paste it somewhere else in another document if I want. But always remember all these graphics that you make are in the system and when you go to your reports you can work with them. Now then the last functionality here is the selection of the type of style which I want to present. Now for now I selected the line chart. And at line chart I have different types which I really want to go into with. I have a line chart normal but I have also an interline compare chart. So let's select that one. Now I see where I off balance, I have got less sales than expected. And you see here that I got more sales than expected. And here I had much less sales than expected. And here I get them in the clear. So by the color of this line, I can see exactly where I have off balance between my realization and my forecast. I love this functionality really. And then we have also the other split line. So this is my trend of my forecast and this is my trend of my realization. And then I can also choose to have the split line, but then the inter-split line compare chart. It looks like this. I think it's a very nice presentation of your data. Now I want to create a new graphic with you. The only thing which I do now here is go back to my default and I go to my tree, open it here and don't want to have only net sales. I also want to have my gross profit, which is here. I also want to have my operating income and I want to have my Profit after tax. So these are a few numbers which I really want to follow. And I don't want to have them in a line chart, I want to have them in a bar chart this time. So the first thing what I do is I save it again under a name. I call it my earning model. Save it here. Press OK. There's a lot of lines there. I don't want to have lines, I want to have bars. So what I do now, I first select the bar chart. Now then I have three options. I can go to simple bar chart, stack bar chart, and round bar chart. Now let's first take the simple bar chart. So now you see that I have uh, this bar chart, and uh, no, yeah. I don't see a lot of my bar charts here because they are, are the highest are front and the lower on the other side, so they are hidden. So what I could do to solve this, I can try to put it in a 3D position. I see already more of them, but still, it's not the way I want to present it. Now, how do you do this now? Then you go to your selection in the order of this, of this presentation. You press the navigation here. And we can reset the order here. So let's place the highest volumes on the on the back. I just have to go to net sales and I place the position down there. So that's the next one which is a big number is the gross profit. I also put it down there. And the operating income is higher as the profit after tax. So let's go there. And I press OK. And now you see that I have a much better presentation here. What I can do now, I can deselect my 3D presentation. So it's straight up. I can activate transparency or not. It's just what you like. It's, it's really personal uh, the way you want to present it. Just play with it and do it whatever you want in your style. So then the next functionality which is there for the bar chart is the stack bar chart. Now let's see how that looks like. Now, or in 3D. Yes, not transparent. So quite nice. Just start experimenting with them. I showed you already here that you can play also with the order of this stacks here. So if you want to present it, this bar chart in the pie chart, of course, it's also possible. The only thing which we have to do is first go to the tree navigation, the second icon here from the right, and we select 
pi. So we want to see how that goes. We select here these numbers and just we press OK. And now we go to pie chart. Now you see you have beautifully your pie chart and you see also the components. Now these components are more or less the same. But let's make a pie chart of costs. So I rather prefer to have a stack bar chart of the presentation I have here. So I will undo my selection. I really prefer to have this one. Simple bar chart gives me a quite nice overview how things are comparing and building up. And this one I already saved. I want another one and I want to have a pie chart of my costs. Go again to default. And from now here, I deselect net sales. Profit loss account. And I go to my operating expenses. And I want to have all these expenses is my total operating expenses here as a pie chart. So how I do this, it's quite efficient. I just select them one by one. Of course, very simple. Here we are there. And press OK after I selected, of course, the, bar, the pie chart selection here. Go to OK. And of course, before I do this, I save the name. So I call it operating costs. I save it to have it in other files of my system as well. And I press OK. Of course, I have the lines here, but I want to have the pie chart. Select pie chart. I really like it. It's very beautiful. So I see what costs are where. I can hover over them with my mouse. I have a very professional, beautiful, colorful presentation. How my cars are being built up. I see that my staff expenses are very, uh, very strong here. But also what I see is that I, it's a little bit confusing because my, my staff expenses for my realization is here, but also for my forecast. And that's, that's a little bit confusing. That's something I don't want. So what I do now, I switch off my forecast and keep my realization here. Then I save it. And now I got a much more accurate pie chart for the year 2019. But what about the year 2020? Now you see here that there are now two new icons here. I just go to the left year, next year, 2020, and 2021, and 2022. So you see that you also can go over the different years in your pie charts by using these icons which are popping up the screen the moment that you use the pie chart itself. Then the last graphic which I want to show you is how you make a trend analysis of your sales. And now we don't go to the money, we go to the numbers. So we want to have an analysis how that our sales in licenses are going. So it's a non-financial related graphic. So the first thing what I do now is make this one here a little bit smaller. Because what I didn't tell you yet is that the graphic shows you how the screen, the grid is being ordered. You see that the graphic here is on years and the grid is also on years. But when I go to with the F5 button to the level of months, The graphic itself also goes to months, so it's interconnected here. So what I see now is a kind of pattern of sales. And I want to have something about the numbers here. How much units I will really sell. So I go to my profit loss account, net sales. I go to my license for borrow my bike, track and trace. And then I go to my total number of units. Just like that one. I deselect here my turnover because it's not in this graphic. And also, I don't like the color blue. So I want to change the color blue. Just by pressing that color, I can choose another one. So I want to have green. 
Zo. En press oké. Okay. And now I have my total number of units. Because I gave only one selection of a row, the subtype is already there. And then I can save this one. Save profile. Number of units. I save it. And I press OK. So what I see now is a sales pattern over the months, and in the beginning, of course, there's no sales, so it, it doesn't make really sense to show you something before April 2021. And first, I also want to analyze the sales patterns of my realization. So I don't want to look here in the forecast, so I switch that one off, and I go to the timetable and start with my analysis somewhere in May 2021. I save it. Nice and beautiful. So there's, here is now some trend. And that's nice. But I want to see the trends overlaid over the years. Now, how do we do this? This is also possible in the graphic here. We go here to that icon and we select season trend style. Now you see that there's a pattern here. What does this pattern tell me? This pattern tells me that I have in the first months always low sale and in the last months of the year as well in the summer my sales go up and the pattern stays the same and when my sales volume is growing over the years because this is the sales of 21 this is 23 this is 22 and this is 24 the pattern can stronger and stronger so that means that I can estimate also my turnover for the future years because it seems that this is the buying behavior of my clients. So now I know all this, I go to the last step of my graphics here. First thing what I do is to just I switch off the graphics. And what I see now is that not only the purple one is highlighted, but also the green button is highlighted. And if it's a green button, I can select and deselect to present all the graphics on my screen at once. So let's see how that works. I press the green icon. And the system starts creating all the graphics here. So first what I do then, for the other, for the, in the beginning, I present them over my screen on a nice way or on my second screen, because you can, make, you can work with more screens. We always work with two screens because then on one screen you have on the left side uh, your graphics and the right side of your numbers and it gives you a good oversight in what you're doing. So maybe like this. Make it a little bit bigger. Just how you prefer to do it. So it's not perfect, but just to give you an idea that it's all flexible. So I want to see the graphics and want to have the calculation, but I want, don't want to have them always on my screen. So we can toggle this. So now you see me, and now you don't see me. So by pressing and again and again and again on this uh, button, all the graphics which are in your system selected by that file are pop up. So the numbers are interrelated to the calculations you make. So if you change your calculations, the graphics also will change. Now, to show you how that one works, just to give you just a little bit an idea, um, I roughly change some numbers now. For that, I want to have to uh, I go to my row of the net sales. I go to turnover of year level. And let's say I double 2023. And let it grow with uh, 60%. It's just an example. I go here to 150 of the 100% in 2022. Enter. You see, it, it directly moves and makes a calculation there. Now it's in percentages. Here, I want to go to the numbers. This graphical interaction with your calculations. So if you're visible orientated and thinking pictures and graphics and you make your calculations, you directly see what is happening inside your total visibility study of all your KPIs. It's very beautiful to adjust your business plan to the right feeling how it could be in the market and see where are the mistakes or how sensible some predictions are. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and hope to see you back soon. Bye bye.